to uh, an issue that uh, is at hand. Uh, uh, Beth outlined a, a series of the elements, but I just want to be able to restress just the picture we're in. Um, we are, uh, from a revenue standpoint, for the FY10 budget, that is, which is on the agenda for you to adopt later today, um, it is uh, it reflects a revenue reduction of $31 million over what we expected to be able to have. Um, we have been managing that by reducing across the board throughout the uh, uh, trimester budget on average 9% uh, reductions. This has been in terms of uh, managed by both a hiring freeze or by several of things, a hiring freeze, um, a limited number of layoffs. We've been generally been able to manage this by attrition, normal attrition with retirements and, and so on. Um, but uh, there have been some layoffs. Uh, we've done it by uh, salary freeze as well um, and executive furloughs. Uh, we have also, on the service side, uh, as we have reported to you before, used $7.25 million uh, from the federal stimulus dollars, that is the American Reinvestment and Recover Recovery and Reinvestment Act, ARRA, um, funds to be able to offset certain of our general fund dollar expenditures in preventative maintenance, which is allowed in the narrow area. And that has been allowed us to not have as serious service reductions, even though that 9% applied everywhere else within the agency. Uh, we didn't have to apply the full amount against uh, against the, the service side. Um, overall, with the federal stimulus dollars, it meant that $23.6 million uh, needed to be able to be reduced. About half of that has come from that 9% in all places other than service. But because the vast majority of our activities are within service, and as you adopted last meeting, um, changes that are going into effect in September addressed about $6.9 million of reductions that were needed to be able to be made. Those were painful reductions. Uh, I think all of you felt that. Those of you who came to the public hearings that uh, we had heard the, the very true and real stories of people who uh, were very worried about what that would mean to their, uh, their, their, uh, their ability to be able to move around our region. Um, we were able to address many of those by uh, creatively adjusting uh, either schedules or, uh, or other elements, um, but obviously $6.9 million worth of reductions are still, uh, were still significant. Uh, that got us to about 5% overall in reduction in the, uh, on the service side with stimulus offsetting about half of that. Uh, what we also told you was that when the actual May numbers came in uh, on payroll tax, that although it was looking bad, that is all the reports of unemployment and, and all were showing that uh, we expected to be down, um, we uh, wanted to wait until at least mid-May or uh, toward the end of May to understand exactly where we were on payroll tax revenues for the first quarter and were they really tracking against what uh, appeared to be that uh, pattern. And the answer is yes, unfortunately it is. That 12.4% unemployment um, rate was a little bit lower, that is statewide, a little bit lower uh, within our region, 11.5%. It still means substantially less uh, revenue. As a result, uh, uh, we are looking at additional service reductions that are going to be necessary to be going into effect in late this year. The actual sign up and therefore when it actually gets implemented is uh, November 29th. Uh, it's, uh, that's controlled under, uh, by our union contract in terms of when people did work and, and uh, when therefore we, we may make changes. Uh, what we looked at this time were really how could we uh, make adjustments and what is uh, our really our, what we call our workhorses, uh, that is the very heavily used lines um, that uh, uh, may have a little bit less ridership during the middle of the day, that is between 9 uh, a.m. and 3 p.m. Uh, and in some cases uh, from 7 p.m. until 10 p.m and then on Saturdays and Sundays. And uh, these are the lines that we uh, that carry most of our passengers from our standpoint. Um, we have, uh, are very jealous of protecting those lines, and yet at this stage we have found uh, really no alternative but to make some what we would consider relatively minor adjustments, by the, but by the very nature of how many buses are out on these lines, even minor adjustments can save 
uh, substantial sums of money. What is being proposed is on 19 lines, that you have that in your packets, uh, on 19 lines that we were, will be making uh, adjustments to the schedule in that midday, uh, uh, most of the time, uh, that is for most of the lines in, in that midday, in some lines, not only the midday, but in the 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. and on weekends. Those slight adjustments are generally in the two minute to three minute range uh, of, uh, of schedule. Uh, on some, on the outer parts of those lines, in a few exceptions, uh, that may have to go to four minutes uh, change of schedule, but uh, still, uh, uh, it will, uh, we're, we're, we're shooting at that two to three minute uh, uh, change. Now, what that means is that that bus doesn't come quite as often by that two to three minute. It means that during that midday or in the evenings, they might have a few more people on it because we'll, by that adjustment, we'll probably be taking a bus out of that rotation, uh, which is where the dollar savings comes. Um, but uh, we believe that this is uh, uh, necessary to be able to meet the uh, additional gap that we have in the revenue uh, reduction in revenue that I outlined, that outlined as well. Uh, now that two to three minutes, uh, uh, you know, it sounds like so little. Why, why, why we, did we address that earlier? Um, and the point is that this, these are our workforces. They carry the. They are more than just our frequent service lines. They are other lines as well. They carry uh, somewhere probably the 75 to 80 percent of all of our riders. And what we did not want to be able to do is to affect that very, very important service, even in small adjustments. We find it necessary, and that is why we are proposing to take this out to public comment. This is not an action item for you. Uh, it is, uh, at this stage, this is a, a, a something that will be taken out to public comment uh, and seeking input. Um, I would stress that these are the lines that, as uh, I've said, that really do carry most of our riders. We would expect, as the economy recovers, that this would be the first place we would restore um, that service. Even that two to three minute uh, difference, we think, does uh, is important to, and is important to our riders. Uh, so um, the proposal is to affect 19 lines. Uh, and you understand, when we call a line, uh, uh, it, uh, uh, we think of it as by the number, but uh, oftentimes those lines have a east side or a west side or a north and a south uh, uh, piece to it under the same number. Uh, what is outlined before you is each element of what that, uh, those service changes are. Uh, we would uh, bring that back to you uh, uh, after public comment um, and, uh, and obviously keep you fully apprised of, uh, of any uh, changes to that. What is necessary, however, is to be able to close $3.5 million worth of budget gap um, on, uh, on the basis of, uh, of these service uh, changes. We uh, will uh, be uh, seeking public comment uh, on this and, uh, and will, as I said, report back to you. The second element, and I know this has had uh, uh, discussion uh, uh, among you and that there are differences of views uh, held by at least some members, but that is uh, um, we will be looking at the issue around Fairless Square. Um, first off, I think we all know that Fairless Square is a misnomer because it's not a square any longer. It's, uh, uh, it has the, the handle that comes out uh, that goes to Lloyd Center uh, along the max line. Uh, 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 but what's different today than it has been in the past uh, in terms of service is that when it comes September 12th, the uh, MAX line, uh, the green and uh, uh, newly to be uh, dedicated on the Transit Mall as well, the yellow line, um, will be running the full length of the Transit Mall from Union Station in the north to Portland State in the south. As you can tell by the, the uh, scatter map that is uh, located uh, in your packets, um, you can see that uh, the vast majority of uh, boardings uh, on and off are either along the east side uh, max alignment, that is from Lloyd Center on over to the Steel Bridge, um, along uh, the uh, uh, Front Avenue where the max line goes, or along the transit hall itself. With the introduction of the green line come September 
Um, the ability to be able to use uh, for most of that travel along the transit mall um, is, uh, will be there uh, combined with, of course, the existing uh, blue and red lines that run on uh, uh, First, Brianne Hill, and Morrison. Um, yes.